What is up guys? Welcome to our week 10 match for the GPC. This week we are taking on Redithan or Ethan and the Tennessee Dynamos. I ask that you go and check out his side of the battle in the description down below. Link is there. Now, um, let me just bring up his team really quick. So his team is made up of Mega Audino, Kiram Black, Skarmory, Embor, Terrakion, Rotom Wash, Lipard, Nidoking, and Leafeon. So nine Pokemon out of the nine, he left behind Leafeon, Lipard, and of course Embor. They all stayed home. So these are the six that we have to deal with. Now before uh, the transaction week, which happened on week nine, from week nine to week ten, um, Ethan had a probably an easier team for me to deal with. Uh, he didn't have the Kieran Black. He had a Mega Altaria, which I could beat with Mega Gardevoir. Um, I could also paralyze it with Klefki. I could always break its sub with Flash Cannon. I could Magnet Rise on it. I could run Aka Berry. I would have been able to deal with that thing a little bit better. But uh, Kieran Black is a very scary wall breaker. And I had to not prep like superbly for it. But I still had to have answers for it. So I have... Klefki, as you can see, that is my main response to Kieran Black. It's actually not on a balloon for once uh, against the Kieran Black. I think I've faced off against four Kieran Black so far with Klefki uh, in total uh, in league play. And I've always brought Air Balloon, and this time I didn't. So, I don't know, uh, because most of the time he would have to go for Ice Beam against me anyway, so it would give me a chance to Magnet Rise regardless. Uh, now, the other thing that he didn't have before this game was Mega Audino. And Mega Audino is so fat <laughs> it's ridiculously fat and i underestimated its bulk honestly i didn't expect it to take hits as well this game and i really should have prepped for it a lot better than i did so let's uh get into the game you guys are going to see the uh the result it's uh, quite a long game actually and uh it took us about 45 minutes to play uh you guys are going to get to see it in about 10 minutes time uh with uh commentary and all so let's get into it let's see what our leads are so i decide to lead off with zapdos to nullify the potential skarmory lead he decides to lead with nidoking now we didn't do a team builder let me just explain my set um sorry thunderbolt tailwind a defog and u-turn u-turn was for this nidoking my game plan was to be able to u-turn on the incoming nidoking now this is where i say i say i should have prepped for mega autono a little bit better uh he has another switch to electric moves and it's autono and it's a very good switch in so i should have definitely prepped a little bit better for that but u-turn was to be able to capitalize on the nidoking and get in dug trio uh and be able to knock out the nidoking with an earthquake so that's that's why we brought this so let's uh u-turn turn one as uh, my opponent switches out into rotom we're gonna be able to u-turn and get into i believe uh, Mega Gardevoir here. Yep, there we go. There's the Mega Gardevoir. Now I'm just gonna throw out a Hyper Voice, and this is where I knew that my prep was not as solid as, uh, as, solid as it should have been. Uh, this Audino is gonna come in, and it's only gonna take 47% from this. It should have taken min about 58 if it was physically defensive, so I knew it was a Spadef set. I'm gonna fire off another Hyper Voice here just to get this thing lower. He goes for a Wish. That's absolutely fine. I'm gonna switch out on this Audino now as I go into Yuxi. Uh, because I know he has to protect, he can't risk me attacking. He's going to go up to 68%, and I'm going to be able to get up Stealth Rocks right here, as he is able to switch into Skarmory. Now, I figure that this thing would be Stealth Rocks. My initial plan with Yuxi, uh, before I even started building the team, was to run an Imprison set to be able to stop the Skarmory from setting up rocks on me, so that I would always be able to U-turn uh, into my Zapdos if I had to. I would always break it sturdy if it wasn't leftovers, and I would always uh, be able to knock it out with Thunderbolt. Threaten it out and maybe even U-turn. Uh, as long as he couldn't go for Stealth Rocks, that was good with me. But ultimately, I decided uh, on a Psych Upset uh, instead, in case his Audino was a Calm Mind variant, uh, which would have done pretty well against me, actually. So um, so this is the, uh, the set that we went with. So unfortunately here, I'm forced to U-turn out. I know he's going to set up Rocks more than likely. Uh, so I bring in Zapdos, uh, being able to bring it in before the rocks go up, as they do. And now I'm threatening this thing with a Thunderbolt, and I'm just going to fire it off here, just to see what kind of damage I can do to this Audino. Uh, it's almost a two-hit KO. It's it's pretty close. I do 24%. If I would have done a little bit more, like 26, we might have been able to do it. But uh, he's going to be able to get a Wish off. Again, I know that he has to protect here, so I'm just going to switch out into my Klefki. And now we're going to set up Spikes so that we force the, um, the Skarmory to have to defog. 
That's that's the game plan. Not have to defog ourselves. I'm actually going to Thunder Wave here on the first turn as he's going to go for a Wish. And then we're going to go for a layer of Spikes as I believe he goes for a Thunder Wave himself. So as soon as I saw Thunder Wave on this Audino, I knew it was going to be a problem. Because nothing on my team could 2-hit KO it. Outside of maybe uh, Mean Shao because I am Reckless. Uh, so there was nothing that I could really do to break it. And it was always getting off a T-Wave on something. So I knew that my team was going to get status. Um, and I was worried at this point, so let's continue. We get up that spike, obviously very good for us, uh, as we're forcing the Skarmory to have to defog. It's gonna come in here. I don't see leftovers on this thing, and I U-turned already on it, so I know it's not Rocky Helmet, so I'm really wondering what item it is. And for the longest time during the game, I was sure it was a Wakan Berry set, to be able to take on Mega Gardevoir, be able to Iron Head it after a Thunderbolt. But you'll see later that it's actually something else. He's going to, uh, switch out his Skarmory here as I go into Zapdos. Nice double. He's gonna bring in, uh, the Rotom. And I'm just going to fire off a T-Bolt on this thing, just to be able to get it a little bit lower so that Gardevoir can potentially revenge it later. He's going to go for a Toxic. A little bit annoying. Now, had I not been Leftovers on Zapdos, this would have been a lot more annoying. But every time I bring in Zapdos, it gains 6 and loses 6. So it's pretty much a steal. Excuse me, a stalemate. Uh, I'm going to go for U-Turn here on Kirim, as I'm going to bring in... Yuxi. Kirim can't do too much to Yuxi, so this is another opportunity for me to just get up my rocks. As that is exactly what I'm going to do, as Rotom is going to come back in. Now, I don't know what exactly what he's going to do, so I'm just going to U-turn out, and I'm going to go into my safest play, more than likely, uh, being Klefki. Again, I can pressure the Skarmory to have to defog by going for Spikes, but he goes for Pain Split. Very nice play on my opponent's part. Doesn't get as much health back as he would have liked, though, as he's sitting at 80%. And now I'm going to go into Mega Gardevoir, and unfortunately for him, he misses a Hydro Pump on me. That would have done a decent amount of damage. Uh, but now he's forced to switch out on a potential Hyper Voice, and this is pretty threatening. Going to bring in the Audino. Now... I go for a Thunderbolt here, expecting him to switch out into Skarmory, uh, being that it might be a Spadef set. I saw 1% damage on Yuxi's U-turn, but that's hard to tell exactly what it is. It might have been a little bit more, a little bit less, who knows. So it was hard to tell exactly what set the Skarmory was, so I wanted to be able to catch it. However, if I went for a Hyper Voice right here on this Audino, and if on any of the turns it got paralyzed when it wanted to go for Wish or Protect, I would have been able to take it out right here. But because of this, because he has the threat of Thunder Waving me, I'm now forced to switch out. And this is very bad. So I want to keep my Gardevoir um, not paralyzed so that I can outspeed the Nidoking, uh, the Skarmory, the Rotom. Because Skarmory can't Oko me with an Iron Head, but if I'm uh, paralyzed, it could definitely Paraflinch me. So I, def I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to switch out of my Gardevoir here, fearing the Thunder Wave, as I believe that is exactly what he does. He does go for the Thunder Wave, trying to paralyze me. We bring in Klefki just on time. He's already paralyzed. Going to get up a spike as he goes for a Wish. I know that he can Wish past this out into Skarmory, so I'm going to cover that by going into Zapdos, and it's going to be a lot of Switch game right here. He's going to go for a Thunder Wave. We're already Toxic, luckily, so that's not going to do anything to us, as we're going to gain 6, like I said, and lose another 6. And now I can keep the pressure going by just uh, continuously U-turning out. Out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the core to be able to uh, volt turn, but or just con continuously U turn. But I'm going to keep up this switch game, just keep going back and forth between Yuxi and Zapdos, trying to catch the Skarmory. As that turn, he gets paralyzed. So I still have not seen an attacking move from this Audino. I don't know what it's here to do. So I'm just going to U turn again back into Yuxi. I do not want to risk my Mean Shao getting paralyzed. Uh, but I actually, no, sorry, I do go into Mean Shack, excuse me, as he does go for Thunder Wave, that's, that's what happened. Uh, but now I'm paralyzed, he goes for Protect, uh, luckily I do have the U-turn right here, so I'm not gonna take any recoil damage from the, uh, the high jump kick, as he is going to, uh, not Protect on that turn, he's just gonna stay in, and I'm assuming Dazzling Gleam, no, he goes for Wish, excuse me. And, uh, now he's gonna switch out into the Skarmory on the one turn that I don't go into Zapdos. And I'm going to get up my spike, but he's going to be able to defog everything away. I'm hoping for a full para here on this turn so that I can at least damage this Skarmory before he gets a chance to defog. Uh, but no, he does get it off. And now we are hazardless again. So this game is looking harder and harder because that Audino is not taking any residual damage when it comes in. So that's, that's the biggest problem. As long as he keeps a, a Stealth Rocks and Spikes off his side, he's good to go. I'm going to go for a T-Bolt here as he uh, decides to bring in the Nidoking this time. And I'm just going to go for a U-turn into what I think is a safe switch in Yuxi. And on the first turn, it is. It's not too bad. He goes for a Fire Punch. We're able to take that decently well. I guess he expected Klefki to come out. Uh, but now I'm going to go for a Stealth Rocks as he, as he goes for Mega Horn. That does a lot. Now, here I make a little bit of a, a misjudgment. I probably should have switched out on this uh, following turn. <clears throat> Knowing that Megahorn was the only move that could knock me out, that or potentially Poison Jab, and we saw that he's Life Orb, so, um, 
knowing that his Skarmory is still alive, he can defog at any time. Um, so I should keep Yuxi in theory, but here I get I let things get to my head, uh, and I'm thinking, okay, he's not going to click Megahorn. I have Zapdos as a switch. I have uh, Mean Shao as a switch, but it is paralyzed. He's probably just going to click something else. Uh, I don't know what yet, but he's probably just going to click something else. Uh, but no, my opponent is smarter than that, and he realizes uh, that he has no reason not to go for a Megahorn uh, because he can check everything else pretty decently. So... Down goes Yuxi, and now I'm going to go into Into Trap, our newest member. Going to get Sucker Punch, but that's not enough to take us out at all. And we're going to be able to go for an Earthquake right here and knock out the Nido King. Now, this is Scarf Dug Trio. It's meant to outspeed Scarf Nido King, Scarf Embor, and Scarf Terrakion. That's its purpose. Um, he's going to go into, um, into Skarmory. I'm hoping for the full para again, but we don't get it. His uh, Skarmory is going to get rid of the rocks, and we're going to go for a T-Bolt, because now we're free to T-Bolt at any time. Uh, we're going to be taking a little bit more damage. Uh, sorry, no, I'm going to go for U-Turn because I don't want to take the poison. That's right. I'm going to go for U-Turn, get on out of there. I'm going to go into Mega Gardevoir. Now, again, the threat of Thunder Wave is real. I'm going to go for Protect, see what he goes for. He goes for Thunder Wave. So this is really annoying. I don't want to get Gardevoir Thunder Wave, though. I'm going to switch out. I'm trying to stall him out of Wish Protects at this point because I don't have another play. He gets fully parried on that turn. I'm assuming he just went for another T-Wave. But I'm going to go for a high jump kick here, and we're actually going to deal a lot of damage to this Skarmory. No, sorry. I U-turn on that turn. That's not the turn I went for high jump kick. Okay. We're going to go into Zapdos again, and I believe we just go for a T-Bolt this time around. And this is where we're going to take 12% damage from the poison, if I'm not mistaken. As, yes, it is. Perfect. Okay, so we, we do 23% to this Autono, and uh, I'm going to U-turn out on it. Knowing full well that it, it can still Dazzling Gleam me very easily. Uh, but I'm going to go into Klefki first, as he does go for the, uh, well, he gets parrot on that turn. Uh, and then he's, I'm going to go for spikes as he goes for a, uh, another para right there. Uh, and then we're going to get up a second layer of spikes. He's been parrot enough. No, nope. game just says you keep getting parrot, buddy. And now we're going to switch out into Mean Shao at, on the turn that he goes for Wish. I know he has Protect, so I'm going to switch back into Zapdos here, as I believe he goes for another para. So this uh, Autono has been parried four times at this point uh, in five turns, which is probably really annoying. Uh, I would assume if I was on his side, I would be pretty frustrated as well. Uh, but I'm going to U-turn here into Klefki. This is the turn that he goes for Dazzling Gleam. And now I'm going to switch out into Mean Shao, figuring that he wouldn't Dazzling Gleam again because it doesn't gain him much. But he does, and that's going to bring us down to 19%, and uh, we're going to gain 7% back. We're just going to go for a high jump kick here because I don't expect him to protect because of all the times he's been full parried. And we're going to get off some decent damage on this Skarmory, but I finally see its item, and it's a Citrus Berry set. So I'm not going to be able to knock it out with the next high jump kick. He actually, I actually get full parried, and he's able to get up rocks again, which is kind of annoying. But it's deserved. He was full parried enough times. I'm going to get full parried again, and so does he. So uh, moving on to the next turn... I'm going to get off my high jump kick, but he's going to live on 14, brave bird me, so he shows that he does not have iron head more than likely, and he lives on 1. Now this isn't too bad because it gives me the switch initiative into my Gardevoir, and I'm able to pick up a free kill here no matter what. Also I do not allow this Skarmory to defog anymore, so our hazards are here to stay, those two spikes are not going away anytime soon. Uh, Rotom comes in, and I T-Bolt here expecting a pain split, but he's actually just going to Volt Switch uh, to get out of there. And he's going to go out into his Terrakion now. Terrakion is a little bit threatening uh, because it can, of course, hit me with a rock move, which would hurt. Uh, I'm going to go for a Protect, uh, scouting what he wants to go for. I love Protect on Gardevoir, man. Uh, I'm going to switch out into Klefki, and he's going to go for another Stone Edge. I don't think he's choiced. I'm under the impression that he's not. Uh, but I'm going to go for a third layer of Spike right here. Uh, just to guarantee that I'm getting off the most damage on that Terrakion when it comes back in, as well as the Kirin Black. I'm going to go for a Reflect Light right here, guys, and this is pretty important. This was my last move, and I was a Light Clay set. I'm going to have eight turns of Reflect. What this means is that Terrakion might not knock me out on Gardevoir, I mean. It might not knock out Gardevoir with a, um, with a Stone Edge. It also means that Kirim, if it's Choice, Choice Scarfed, might not knock out Gardevoir with an Iron Head behind the, um, behind the Reflect. It's a roll. So, this Reflect up forces him to make certain plays, as you guys will see in a second. I'm going to bring in Gardevoir, best wall breaker. Just going to go for a Hyper Voice right here. 
uh, on the Mega on, on the Kirim, which I was really surprised that he sacked. Uh, I guess he didn't have a good switch anymore, so he's just gonna sack off the Kirim. Uh, this is Gardevoir's second kill. Dougie got it on the uh, uh, on the Nido King. Four Chan is going to Hyper Voice here as Ethan is able to break through and wish. Now, my Reflect turns are counting down. He's going to Protect here. He's going to go up to 80%. Now, I saw that Hyper Voice did 40. I know it's a roll. It's probably not going to do a KO. I'm going to go for the Hyper Voice here on this turn. I believe here is where he gets Full Parrot. Yeah, so he's going to get Full Parrot on that turn. I have three turns of Reflect yet left. I go for Hyper Voice. He goes for a Wish. He's able to get it off. I need the Full Parrot right here, and you guys saw it. We got it, actually. I needed the Reflect to stay up so that he couldn't go into Terrakion and knock me out necessarily. And this is why I was confused as to why he sacked uh, Kirim over sacking Rotom. Was because I felt like if it was a Scarf set, um, then if he would have waited out this Reflect, he would have had two options to knock me out and not have to play with full Paras. But... He's going to get full parrot on that turn. I'm going to go for a safe Psy Shock. It's able to knock out anything that comes out. And Audino is basically dead at this point. Rotom's going to come out on the last turn of Reflect because it's forced to. Because Terrakion doesn't necessarily knock me out with a Stone Edge. So he's forced to sack off his Rotom. And he is going to get Hyper Voice and knocked out. So all that's left is his Terrakion. Now, here's where fear started setting in. <laughs> I knew that this thing wasn't choice. And I had a pretty good feeling by the way that Ethan was speaking in the chat that this thing was shook a berry now the only thing that I have left that can knock this out <clears throat> is Dougie from the range it's at Doug trio is the only thing that can knock it out with an earthquake but if he shook a berry I cannot now I kind of wish that I hadn't invested as much bulk as I did into Doug trio because it is a scarf set and because right here if Nido King had gotten a lot more damage off on my Doug Trio, like brought it down to say about 9%. Let me just show you the calc, guys. Earthquake to a Shookaberry Terrakion does 39 to 47. So he's out of range, right? And reversal at 28%, which is what uh what we're at when we come in, because we were at 34, does 42 to 50. So it's not enough. We need more damage. If we were at 3%. Reversal is a guaranteed Oka. Even if we're at 15%, it's it's doing a lot more damage and I have a chance to kill him, as you can see. So I would probably click that instead of clicking Earthquake because I'm pretty sure he's Shooka. And if we're, what, at 10%? Let's see, 10. No, 10 is still the same. Let's see, 9. 9, it goes up. So I think it's in increments of 10. Uh, reversal would have done 79 to 94, so that's a guaranteed kill. And I don't see why he would have brought a Choppleberry. Uh, there's no reason against my team except it may be Scarf Mean Shao, but that's about it. Um, he could do other, he has other answers to Scarf Mean Shao anyway, so it's not, it, it shouldn't have been an issue. But yeah, so reversal, if his Nido King had gotten off a little more damage on me, it would have been able to knock this thing out. But now I'm forced to rely on hoping that he's not shook a berry. So I'm going to let my Gardevoir go down here to an Earthquake, which pretty much confirms to me that he's not choice. I know he's not choice now, because if he went for Earthquake and he was choice, my Zapdos just came in, Thunderbolted twice in one. So there's no way this thing is choice. I don't see leftovers. I know it's Shooka. It has to be Shooka 100%. There's no other set that this thing could be. In my head, that that's all it is. And the fact that he's got Earthquake, Stone Edge, I'm assuming close combat, uh, and potentially a last coverage move. I don't think he has Quick Attack for Doug Trio for like a weakened Doug Trio. That doesn't make much sense. So I'm going to go into Doug Trio here. And like I said before, guys, I Cal to Reversal. It's not going to do enough. I know he's Shooka. The only way I knock him out is if I get a critical hit, which I do. So that is going to be week 10, guys. We are able to pick up a 2-0 victory over Ethan, Redithan, and the Tennessee Tynamos. I felt really bad after this win. Uh, it was the first time I've probably ever felt really bad after a win. Uh, maybe even against Mens. You guys didn't see that game, but I froze a, um, a Florgis, and I won that way. 
Uh, this and my game against Trev were kind of the only real instances of uh, good fortune that I've had in the GPC so far. I think my other wins have been uh, boiled down to just good prep and good playing. But this was 100% like this. <laughs> I, I Like I said, I, I feel really bad about this win. Uh, Ethan was very angry after the game to say the least. Uh, I did apologize, uh, even though it's not my fault. It's not like it's something that I can control, but uh, I guess I could have prepped a little bit better for that Mega Auto. No, it wouldn't have been able to T-Wave as many Pokemon, uh, especially not a Yuxi. Uh, well, Yuxi wouldn't have been forced to take as many hits as it did from uh, Nidoking if I wouldn't have allowed Mean Xiao to get uh, paralyzed, because I would have been able to switch it in on the Mega Horn and be able to knock off the, or even U-Turn. Uh, but knock off the uh, the Nido King. I would have let Mean Xiao go down, and that would have been that. Yuxi would have still been alive. I would have been able to keep up rocks and whatnot, and I would have had an alternate response to the Terrakion, which is probably the big reason why he got rid of Yuxi was because of uh, Terrakion, and he knew that it has sweeping potential at the end of the game uh, because it had that Shooka Berry. So, um, also, if I didn't get up that last layer of Spike, there was a chance that even Crit. I'll show you guys right here that crit earthquake wouldn't have ta taken him out because he would have taken one less spike which I believe is 9% less damage so he would have been at 16 uh, at 58% uh, sorry 68% so earthquake even a crit wouldn't have done as much so I'm really glad I got that <clears throat> got up that last spike excuse me but uh, yeah it just goes to show that uh, this is Pokemon man this is the the game that we play with I got hacked out in the UPA almost every single week and I had to deal with it, and uh, I'm still alive. Uh, I'm not. I haven't gone out and like punched people. Uh, <laughs> I haven't gotten ridiculously angry. If you go back to UPA week four, you will see me rage once because uh, it was a live com. But um, yeah, guys, we advanced to a uh, a seven and three record with only one week left. Our final opponent is Johnny Ricepool. We're sitting. Uh, with a plus 14 record, I, I got the wrong record when I um, when I told you guys last week after the win, but we're sitting at a plus 14 record, which means that the only way that we would not make playoffs, I believe at this point, is if my opponent, this uh, if not my opponent, if one of the other players in my division gets a 6-0 this week, and then next week gets another 6-0, and I lose 6-0. That is the only way that we're not making playoffs at this point. And even that, that's a tie. So I don't know what the tiebreaker is going to be in that case. But yeah, that's that's literally the only way that we could not make playoffs. So looks like we're heading into playoffs for the first time uh, in the league. Uh, wasn't able to make it in the UPA because of all the hacks. Uh, the NBA ended early. The NPL, I ended up uh, giving back the team to Rob. So this is really the only league that I've had the opportunity to, to make it into playoffs realistically. Uh, and it looks like we're going to do just that. So again, big shout outs to all of you uh, for watching, for checking out these videos, uh, being here, supporting. It really means a lot. Of course, make sure to leave a like if you do, if you do enjoy these videos, if you want to keep seeing them. If you're excited to see us in playoffs, the only, uh, the only game we have left is against Johnny. Of course, like I said, next week, um, we might make it a fun match because I'm almost guaranteed playoffs and he's... Uh, guaranteed not making playoffs in the same division, so uh, we'll see what we want to do about that, but uh, we'll, we'll try to make it a serious game just so that if I do get 6-0, so the other person that has a chance to make playoffs uh, doesn't complain that we weren't having a serious game. So anyway, that's going to be it, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!